Fantastic, that's working brilliantly. Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So in today's episode I'm going to be tackling a job on our newly acquired Mark 7 Ford Fiesta. Now earlier on this week the car went in for MOT and it failed on a couple of bits and one of those was uh, fluctuating front brakes. Now looks as if it's down to having knackered front discs and pads. So as, as you can see I bought a set so hopefully we'll get them fitted without any problems. Let's go straight into the video. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, I'll just jack back and support it a bit better. Bit of persuasion. Here we go. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, the disc is not exactly in the greatest of conditions. It's, the car's been stood for a few months now, so it's not a surprise really. So it, it makes sense to just get them changed out. So the first thing we need to do is we need to remove uh, the two bolts that hold the caliper to the carrier. So you've got one here and then one just up the top there. But also what I'm gonna do while this is in place, I'm gonna loosen the bolts that hold the caliper to the carrier. So we've got one there and then another one just up there as well. So we'll get those all loosened off first. So the first carrier bolt is at 15 mil, very tight 15 mil at that. Jesus. Reiki. Oh. 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 Just get that loosened off to start with. Let's hope this one's a bit kinder. I think she's moving. Right, so the caliper to cradle bolts are 12 mil. Let's see how kind these are gonna be. Yeah, that's turning okay. Let's see if this one's the same. One, and get this one off as well. There's two. Okay, might need a bit of persuasion. There we go. Just going to put a bungee cord around the suspension leg just to suspend the caliper in place so that it can't fall anywhere and damage the brake pipe. Just now removing the bolts that hold the carrier to the hub. One, two. This should come out pretty easy. Pads are still stuck on the carrier itself. Now we need to just take the disc off. Okay, might need a bit of help. Voila. Nice new disc. A lot better than the old one. <laughs> Certainly when you look on the old one you can see the surface edge here is all rusted up and horrible. It's, uh, yeah, definitely scrap. Certainly, this one looks a lot better. So uh, let's get this one fitted. Just like that. Okay, so the next task is we need to get these old pads out of this carrier. Now, as you can see, looking at them, the, the meat on them, to be fair, isn't actually that bad. It's pretty good, but they're so cheap. And the fact that we've got a new disc fitted anyway, we might as well get these out and put new ones in. So it's just a case of just pushing them out, like that. Well, he says. There we go. That's one. There we go. That's two. Let's get the new ones fitted. Two sets, one for each side. Right then, so the next task we need to do is we need to compress this caliper piston. Now, if you 
can imagine all the assembly all back on the disc, including the uh, pads in the carrier. When you're applying the brakes, and obviously as you're squeezing the pads up against the disc, the piston is required in order to create that movement of them pads. And over time, of course, the pads will start to wear down and get thinner and thinner. And as it wears down, this caliper piston will have been moving further and further in this direction and narrowing this gap here. Now, in the position it's in currently at the minute, if I try to put these new pads on, even though the old ones are still fairly meaty, the thickness of the pads of the new ones is still slightly thicker. So trying to put the new pads with the piston in this position over the disc, it just wouldn't go on properly, it wouldn't fit. So in order to allow that gap to increase so that we can put the new pads over the top, this piston needs compressing. So what we're gonna to need to do this is a G-clamp. Right, so we'll unhook this bungee cord. There's actually some cobwebs in here, look at that. <laughs> so, get yourself a big socket that's just slightly smaller than the width of the caliper piston itself. Stick that inside, then get your G-clamp, wind it into a position so that you can secure it, like so. And what will start to happen now, as I start to wind the G-clamp, this piston is gonna start then going in. And then it goes. And the reason why I've used that socket inside that uh, piston and the G-clamp is so that it spreads even pressure of this G-clamp across the entire width of that piston. Socket back out, caliper piston is now fully depressed. We can now reassemble. Just gonna re-secure the uh, caliper back to that suspension leg again. So as you can see on the sides of the carrier, you've got like these sort of securing pins. And same just there as well. And so when you're putting the pad that goes at the back, you need to ensure that those lugs that are on the sides slot into those pins on either side, like so. And then when you're coming to put this pad on, just making sure that they go into the pins there and there. See how easy these are to fit in. One side done. Pretty pleased with that. Pads are in nice and securely, so it's looking good. And as you can see, it fits nicely over the disc. Fantastic. Right, so now we just need to secure the carrier bolts, which are here, to secure the carrier to the hub. Right. Carrier on like that. <sighs> Fantastic. Nice and secure. Next task is to attach the caliper to the carrier. Just unlocking it from this cord. Spot on. So the last task that we do before we put the wheel back on is that we just need to give the brake pedal a small pump so that we can get the pads right up close against the disc. Right, so this pedal at the minute is going to feel quite spongy. So what you just need to be doing is pressing on it so that the pads then start getting closer and closer to the disc. Once they get pretty much bang onto it this pedal will then start to feel firm so it's going to feel a bit spongy at the minute and there we go that's now all of a sudden gone very very hard so that's now should in theory have sorted out the brake on that corner yeah absolutely spot on fantastic right let's get the wheel back on right so that's one side done Time to crack on with this side.
right then. Let's go for a quick drive. All right. Let's see what this is like. Feels good so far. I'll try a bit more of a vigorous stop. Yeah, fantastic, that's working brilliantly. Right, okay then, so I guess that one is wrapped up once more. That's uh, one job ticked off the list for the Fiesta. So before we finish the video, just wanna of course pass on thanks to Sutton Auto Factors once again for supplying us the parts, very reasonably priced, and they've worked a treat. So massive thanks for that one, guys. So if you did like this video, do give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it thumbs down. Any comments you want to put forward will, of course, be greatly appreciated. Have a check of our social media platform details at my email address in the description below. And if you would like to give myself and the little man some support with our channel, then just hit the subscribe button at the end of the video. We would really appreciate all the support that you guys can give to us. It goes a long way in helping us out. So if you'd like to do that, we'd really appreciate it. Right, as I say, that's one job ticked off the list. Um, there is at least one more other job that I can do, but we'll pick that one up in another episode. So until that episode, thanks very much for your continued support as ever, and we shall see you then. Take care yourselves. Cheers now. Bye-bye.